Hey guys, welcome back to True Reflections. Today, let's talk about dating. Let's talk about dating in the 21st century. Dating in the 21st century has become unbelievably hard. It has now become one of the most difficult tasks that a person have to go through. People are so complicated. They're more into playing games and with toying with another person's emotions and feelings. It has now become toxic in a in a sense. Dating in the 21st century has now required you to play a game that you are not necessarily interested in playing. You must lie. You have to act like you don't care. Even if you do, you must date multiple people in an attempt to keep the attention of one person. Because Whilst you may think that you have found someone that you're genuinely interested in and that you have made a genuine connection and you're hoping that something is there, you're hoping that they feel the same, but to the other person, it is just a casual flame. You must be unavailable. If you are too available to a person, they view you as being thirsty. They view you as being desperate. So now in order to not to turn that person completely off from you, you must now make yourself unavailable. You have to ignore calls. You have to... Um, delay in your response in replying to a text. You know, even if you want to pick up a phone call, you have to let it ring for, you know, a period of time before you can pick up. Or you have to ignore it and then return a call maybe an hour or two later because you don't want to, you don't want to seem too desperate. You don't want to seem too available or else they, the other party is going to get turned off. It, when did dating become so hard? You have to resist things that comes naturally to you. It's almost as if you have to pretend to be what you're not in hopes of getting what you want. It's like dating in the 21st century, again, requires you dating multiple people. And in dating multiple people, you have to hope and pray that you are the favorite one. Yes, honey. You have to hope and pray that you are the favorite one out of the many options out there. And even though that you may be the favorite one, you may be, you know, the one person that they do share a genuine connection with. You may be the person that, you know, they are comfortable being themselves around. You know, you have that connection and you have that chemistry. When you guys get together, you laugh and you talk about everything. But somehow, you are still not enough. Somehow, you are still not what they are looking for. You are still not what they need. Even though that you may be the favorite one. And when you have gotten to the position of being the favorite one, and this is in quotations, you then now have to hope and pray that 
whilst you are the favorite one, that you remain the favorite one. And you have to hope and pray that they like you enough to want to date you exclusively. Dating in the 21st century has now become a competition of who does she likes more or who does he likes more. Who is he spending most of his time to? Who is he giving his most of his or her time of uh, time and attention to? It has become a competition, and a competition where you where you have to you have to pretend as if you don't care because if you show that you care too much, then they're going to lose interest and they're going to go to somebody else. Why do we have to compete for another person's attention? Why must we beg for another person's time, effort, and attention in hopes that they can see the value in the type of person that you are so that they can value you enough to want or to desire to want to be with just you, with only you. It's crazy. But in situations like this, we must, we must search within ourselves and we must ask ourselves, is this person really worth the time, effort, and energy are they really worthy of you? Dating in the 21st century, you have to be so sure of yourself. You have to be so happy and so content in who you are as a person to make the conscious decision to just simply remain and be single until you can find a person that can also see your value and your self-worth and just desires to be with you and only you. We must then love ourselves enough to say, hold up. What am I doing? Why am I competing for her time? Why am I begging him for his time, for his attention? Why do I have to play along in their silly little game in hopes that they can see me in hopes that they can love me. You need to, we need to ask ourselves these questions. And this is coming from a single person that has been in that situation before. And I have to come to the realization that rather than delaying the process of inevitably meeting the person that is meant for me, I had to let go and I had to cut loose of the person that I felt was a hindrance. A person will always take as much as you are willing to give. In a situation, it's not necessarily the other person's fault. Because you were basically willing to put up with the bullshit. Excuse my French, but it is what it is. You were willing to go along with the gimmicks in hopes that he or she will want to be with you. 
So as long as you are willing to give, they are willing to take. You have to be that person that says to themselves, I'm not with it any longer. I'm not doing it any longer. I have my pride. I know my value, my self-worth. I may like you a lot, but I love myself and I know what I deserve and I deserve better than what I am getting. And you have to stand firm in that decision. And it may hurt you. Oh, definitely is going to hurt because you genuinely cared about this person. So yeah, you're going to feel it a little bit. But it's definitely worth it because you will now be able to put yourself in a position to receive something better. If this person, be it male or female, that you are entertaining and you are competing and you are trying to get their attention and you are trying to make them commit to you, if they cannot see your value, then you have to be able to see it in yourself. And once you start to see just how valuable you are as a person, the choice to walk away is going to be somewhat easier. You have to know and believe that you deserve better than what they are willing to give you. And so now you need to take the necessary actions and put yourself in place to be in a position to be ready to receive what you know you deserve. Dating in the 21st century has become one of the most difficult tasks a person will 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 have to go through in the hopes of finding love. And you may be beating a dead horse. And I know it's hard. I, I don't want to just um, say this to the ladies because, you know, you have instances where men are put in this position also. But it's more so it's more so for us ladies. You don't want to feel like you invested so much time in this person to just simply walk away from it. You want to be able to show your loyalty to this person. You want to be able to prove to them that you have their back and that you're holding them down. You know? The time invested. But you have to know. You have to be able to recognize when to let go. When to give up. Because again, a person will continue to take as long as you are willing to give. With no intentions of giving back. If you are dealing with someone and you can clearly see that they are not reciprocating your time and your effort and your feelings, your emotions, your love, your dedication, your loyalty. If they are not reciprocating your actions and your feelings back to you, I don't care if it was six months, a year, two years, three years. Don't allow another person to misuse you and to take the best years of your life away from you because you are too frightened or you don't want to give up on something that you feel that you worked so hard 
to obtain or you're working so hard to try to obtain it. At the end of the day, what is meant for you will always be for you. Even if it means that you have to let it go. Even if it means that you have to step away from it. It may be temporary. It may be where your absence can help the other person realize just how much they love you and need you in their life. Or it may simply be a situation where something better is waiting for you. You have to be able to determine that. And sometimes it's a sad reality that we have to acknowledge or at least consider that sometimes that we make a person better for someone else. And I know a lot of you going to be like, well, you know what? I'm not going to work so hard and train a man and, you know, to let another person um, reap the benefits. But sometimes it is, that is the reality. That is something that we have to think about. That is something that we have to take into consideration. Sometimes we were placed in another person's life or someone was placed in our life just to help us to get to where we need to be so that we can be a better man or we can be a better woman for the person that we were meant to be with. It doesn't necessarily have to be me. It doesn't necessarily have to be you. And yes, it is It is not a good feeling to know that you invested so much into a person and then to have another person come in and reap the benefits. But guess what? The same way that you may have invested your time in that man and another woman is reaping the benefits, your future husband or the person that is meant for you Another female invested time in him to help him become the man that you need him to be or to help her become the woman that you need her to be. It's all a matter of perspective. It's all in the matter of how you choose to look at it. So while dating in the 21st century, maybe one of the most I can't even find a word <laughs> I can't even find a word for what dating in the 21st century is like but whatever word that you choose to insert in that blank space we have to be able to look for the positive in every situation and so I just wanted to share that with you guys today. I probably rambled on for a little bit, but it was heavy on my mind. And it was something that I wanted to touch bases with. And I hope that you guys can reflect on what was said. And, you know, I pray and I hope for the best, not only for myself, but for each and every one of you that may be listening to this podcast today. So be blessed.